What's up everybody? My name is Shannon and I am still waiting for my Seder. Today we are talking about Silo by DJ McHale. And let me tell you, this book will mess you up. The writing is genius in that he keeps lying to you. <laughs> and it just made me so mad. I'm pretty sure everyone who saw me driving on my way home the other day when I was finishing this book probably thought that I was out of my mind. What? happening? Why? You said it was this, and now it's this, and now everyone's gone, and I need to read Storm now. If you've read my non-spoiler review, I literally wrote that, like, right when I finished it, so I was all full of emotion, so you can probably gather that a little bit, because I was just, oh my gosh. Because of that, I highly recommend this book to anyone, even if you don't really like reading, I would recommend this book to you because it has something for everyone and it is very well written. You've got Tucker, who's a football star, you've got his friend Quinn, who's super nerdy, you've got Tori, who's kind of a broody, like, independent girl, you've got Kent, who's also a football player and kind of a douchebag, you've got Olivia, who's kind of your typical pretty girl, whatever, I mean, it's got a very wide range of characters and it takes place in a little island town, it's very isolated, I just feel like it has all the makings of like a really good TV show or a really good movie that just I feel like everyone can relate to, everyone can find something in it, and it's really amazing and it's so well written because you find things out along with Tucker. You never know anything before Tucker does, which at times really got on my nerves because I was just like, Tucker, man, you don't know anything. Like, what, what? I don't understand. What's happening? Everybody's lying. I don't, I don't get it. But because of that, I was so glued to it because I just, I wanted to know. And when it ends, you still don't know. That is how you set up a series. I see, I read so many books. Like, I, I'm looking at a bunch of series right now that my camera is sitting on. I see so many books that you have the first book and it's very well, like, contained. It could totally be a standalone book, and sometimes it should be because all of the sequels suck. But this book cannot be a standalone book. It is meant to be a series, and it is written to make you want to continue reading the series because it just makes you want to know. And I understand some people will probably read this and not be into it, and they're just be like, I don't understand what you're talking about. But you can't deny it. It is written so that it is a series and that you are going to be along for the ride. There is no oh, this one was good, but all of these others are crap. You don't need these. You probably need the rest of them. Granted, I haven't read Storm yet, but I'm very excited to, and hopefully I will get to soon. Would you call back, baby? I wrote you a song. Getting into the story a little bit, at the very beginning, a fellow teammate on Tucker's football team dies in the middle of the game. Nobody knows what's happening. And they start to kind of find out that there's been more of these deaths and they don't know what it is or why it's happening. And Tucker and Quinn go out one night and they witness this mysterious black aircraft like hovering like over the sea and it's like singing. I don't know man. It's, it's hovering over there and then something shoots out of the sky and it explodes. And, you know, they're talking to the police, nobody knows what it is. The way it's set up is really interesting because they weren't the only ones there. And you kind of get to find out, like, the other people who they saw, like, how they fit in. And it's really cool. Like, I don't, it, it unfolded very nicely. I, I think the author did an amazing job with that. But the government comes, Silo, and they shut down the island. It's quarantined. They're like... It's a virus outbreak. Nobody's leaving. And of course people are freaking out and their communications get cut so they can't talk to anybody on the mainland because, you know, that's what happens when you live on an island. People are getting paranoid and not knowing what's happening because Silo isn't telling them anything. But I was getting paranoid and I was getting unhappy because I wasn't being told anything. You really feel like you're part of the story. It was just... I can't even explain it. You gotta read it to understand. It's amazing. You start to kind of find out that things are way more complicated than they seem on the surface because you have, when we had the explosion, a bunch of stuff washed up on shore and it turns out that it's this drug that this guy is now pushing and we later find out that that drug is what's killing people. 
And if that's what's happening, does the dude know that that's what's happening? Did he just find it on the beach and now he's pushing it? Well, we do find out that he was hired to push it, but that also could have been a lie. Because right around that time, we started finding out a lot of other things were lies, so I don't really know. And then he gets dead. You have that drug, which is called the Ruby, and then you have Silo, and I'm kind of thinking, is Silo part of the Ruby? Did they develop it? Are they the reason it's there? If that's the case, then why was Fight against them in the end? And why is, I don't know, like, they kind of... You get more questions than you do answers as the book goes on because they're hurting people up and they're, you know, test doing a lot of tests on them and I don't know if they've chosen the island to test this new drug and this is just what's happened. It started killing people and they're not telling anybody about it or if it was an accident and it wasn't ever supposed to happen. I don't know. And then what are those crazy black things in the sky? I still don't know. Are those part of Silo? Are those part of the government? I don't know, because they keep fighting each other, and I just, I don't know. Anyway, like I said, as the book goes on, you do get more questions than answers, because during the climax, they, Tucker and his friends do make it off of the island, only to find that everyone's gone. Like, it's not just that people are dead, everyone's gone. Like, what, what's happening? And they start to hint that maybe this is a second civil war, because Silo is a branch of the government, and there was like a downed um, black plane there, and it seemed like Silo was fighting them, and so maybe Silo was like branching off from the government, but then why? What are they doing? How does the ruby fit into it? Are the black planes part of the government? Are they part of Silo? I don't know. I gotta read the other book. Overall, like I said, I highly recommend this book to anyone, because it is just absolutely amazing. It blows my mind. It's so well written, and it just makes me want to read the next book so very bad. Of course, I can't do that, and I will tell you why. I am now listening to... wait for it. Are you ready for this? Winter. I am so excited to be reading Winter. It is longer than I thought it was. I did not realize that it was over 800 pages, which in audiobook terms means that it's 21 files, which each file is two hours, so it's long. I don't know when I will be done with it, but I'm listening to it all the time, and it was almost hard to talk about Silo today, because I have been listening to Winter, and I just, I can't even, I just, I can't even. I'm so in love with Carswell Thorne. I just I can't even. So that will be exciting. Stay tuned for that. That is everything I've got for you today, guys. So I'll see you next time. Bye. I don't, they don't tell you. It makes me want to read the other book and it makes me talk with my arms. <laughs>